Welcome to section 4.2. Okay, gentle people, I'm going to start out this lecture with a quiz. So what I want you to tell me is looking at this list of chemicals, which one of these would make a strong electrolyte? So I'm hoping high school went over this definition, but if not, we're going to go over and talk about what an electrolyte is. So looking at this list, two of these compounds are a strong electrolyte. So how did I come to this conclusion? Well, the first thing I need to know is the definition of an electrolyte. So besides something that plants crave, an electrolyte, it is a substance that when you dissolve it in water, will make the water conductive. Now, if we were meeting in person, I would go ahead and do a demo for you guys. So unfortunately, we can't do this, so I'm going to have to rely on pictures. All right, gentle people, so here's the idea. What I would do is I would have a power source to supply electricity. Now, that power source is going to have one end that goes to a light bulb. Now, that light bulb is going to have another lead that is going to go to water, I'm going to put the other end to the power source in the water through a wire. Now what you will notice is that this circuit is broken, so the wire is not connected. So if I were to go ahead and dunk this into pure water, the current would not flow and thus the light bulb would not glow. It turns out that pure water is a very poor conductor of electricity. However, if I have an ionic compact, my ionic compound, when dissolved in water, it can potentially break up and have positive ions, and it can have negative ions. And these positive and negatives are going to disperse evenly in water. Well, what happens is those ions can carry electrical current, and thus I complete the circuit. If I have a soluble ionic compound, what's going to happen is it's going to complete the circuit and the current is going to flow and my light bulb is going to go on. Now you can see this in this first picture right here. In this case, we have the ionic compound copper chloride. It fully dissolves into solution, making copper two plus ions and chlorine ions. And what you'll note is the light bulb lights up. So if I were to look at the particulate level, I have all these ions dispersed in solution. So to make my solution conductive, what I need to have are ions present in solution. Now that is the idea with an electrolyte. It is going to produce ions in solution. Now a strong electrolyte is going to produce a lot of ions in solution. And what you can say is that with a strong electrolyte, I can put the ionic compound in solution and 100% is going to break up. That means every positive and every negative ion is going to be apart and they're going to be surrounded by water molecules. This produces a lot of ions in solution. Now there's something called a weak electrolyte. Now a weak electrolyte is going to produce ions in solution, but what's going to happen is not all of my compound is going to break up. For example, if you look at acetic acid, it can break up into the acetate ion and the H+. Now, if you look at this picture, what you will see is some of my acetic acid is going to remain intact, but some of my acetic acid is going to break up. So if you were to do the calculation, it turns out that acetic acid, 97% of it sticks together and only 3% of it actually breaks up. So this is why we consider it a weak electrolyte. It doesn't dissociate 100%. It only makes a few ions in solution. Now, for now, there is only one weak electrolyte I want you to know, and that is acetic acid. Later on, we will talk about other weak electrolytes, but for now, this is the only one I want you to know. The last thing we have to talk about is something called a non-electrolyte. So this is a substance that dissolves in water, but it doesn't make ions. So an example of this would be ethanol. So ethanol, if I go ahead and put it into water, it evenly disperses, it makes a homogeneous solution, but this is a molecular compound. It is not made out of ions. 
And so what you see is that no ions are being generated here. So if you have a soluble molecular compound, it is always going to be a non-electrolyte. And a non-electrolyte, the key to define a non-electrolyte is it produces no ions in solution. So going back to that first slide, what we will see is that we have two ionic compounds and these are soluble ionic compounds. So these two are strong electrolytes. This right here is a molecular compound. It is a non-electrolyte. Well, I hope that made sense, Chem1A, and remember to stay safe.